Hi, nearly to tell you autos here. I'm here with this Julietta behind me. I'm going to be doing a repair video on it. It's been uh, a few months since I've done a repair video. So uh, let's get this one done. Um, it's got a stop stop fault on it. It's got a problem with one of the sensors. So uh, let's have a look at it and uh, let's get this fixed. Just inside the car now, I'm going to start it and show you what fault we've got coming up on it. First of all, it comes up with stop start on available and check engine. Uh, there is a daytime running lights fault as well, but uh, that's not for me to fix in this video. Uh, right, so now I've plugged in the computer, uh, read the codes, and the fault we're getting is uh, P1850. Uh, gear lever position sensor faulty So I've got a brand new one from the dealer. And I think it cost around 80 90 pounds So uh, we're gonna get that fitted now first job. We need to do Is obviously turn the engine off and then remove this gear um, Gator here and um, there are four little clips on it. So you do need to uh, Get in quite well and lift each clip up I'm gonna need two hands to do that. So bear with me Okay, right on the underside of here, there are four little clips. You do need to just get your fingers behind them and just lift the clip out. And then once you've got one out, the rest of them should, should follow quite quickly. See down there, there is a little electrical connector. That's the connector for the gear lever sensor. So we're just going to unclip that now. And there we go, just lift that up out of the way. And now it's time to get the car up in the air and uh, get the sensor off from underneath the car. Now removed all those 13mm uh, nuts, we're now onto the rivets, there are four of them in total, uh, so we just need to uh, drill them out. If the end doesn't come off and it just starts rotating, you can just give it a hit with the hammer and a bit of a chisel and it should come off. I should. You can see just here there's two little clips holding it in as well, so you just get a screwdriver behind that behind those and prise them up. Now we've got your gear selector housing loose. Uh, there are sort of 10 tabs around the outside of it. You only need to pop a couple and um, the rest should pop down. Just stick a flat screwdriver in the end and just give it a turn. As you can see, it's given way already. I might just need to do one this side. If only they'd put this uh, silencer a little bit further over, I could have filmed things a bit better for you. Now, that's the sensor you need to change here. There's a yellow tab. Pop the yellow tab out. And on the end of the stick, there should be two clips. If you get your fingers in there, give them a pinch. And then use your other hand to pull them off. And then just a, a water sort of shield to uh, stop the 
the electrical connection from coming out. Now, the sensor has been removed from the car. This is the faulty one. Uh, there are some broken wires which has caused the sensor to go faulty. Um, one's breaking, one's broken at the other end. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be putting this one back on because the wire has gone uh, a little bit manky. Um, to remove it, you've got this connected onto the shaft of the gear selector. This can be quite awkward to remove, so get a screwdriver in it, um, prise it to one side and then lift it down with the other hand. You also need to remove this yellow tab, just get a screwdriver down the side of it and just pull it out. It does come all the way out. And as you can see, that's just rests on the rest of the shaft like that and just pull it down and out it comes. So let's get the new one out of the box. As you can see, one brand new genuine sensor with no uh, damaged wires. So let's get this back in the car now. What I'm gonna do first is poke the electrical connector through There we go, all refitted. Just double check everything's been put in right. The wire can't chafe. You've put the bung back in correctly uh, because if you don't put the bung in, you will probably get a little bit of extra road noise and uh, moisture getting uh, into places where it shouldn't. So now we need to pop that plastic cover back on and then we can put the heat shield back on. It's all a very fiddly job. I wouldn't fancy doing this uh, on my back on the floor. Now the fun part is lining up these holes again and be very careful not to uh, double thread anything. As long as you've got a decent torch you should be able to see quite clearly. Right, okay, before we uh, fix any of these rivets and make everything permanent, let's go back into the car Connect everything up and make sure the fault's gone. Okay, down that little hole is going to be the sensor. You will just want a pair of pliers just to poke down there and grab the sensor and hopefully pull it up. So plug the sensor back in like so. See, that's all plugged in there and just make sure it clips back onto the clip it was resting on. It should just slide down onto it like so. 
make sure everything's free everything moves left to right and now we can check the fault code has gone okay now this is the first start of the ignition I haven't reset any of the fault codes. You can see straight away, we don't have a stop start not functioning light up. We've just got the daytime running lights and the error message for the engine ECU um, hasn't popped up either. So let's reset the codes and then we can start the car up. And also the fault isn't red anymore, so uh, it, the ECU has noticed that it's now got a electrical signal from the sensor, so we know that's all fixed. Let's clear the fault codes. Foot on the clutch, start it up. Not returned, stop and start it. All good, so let's finish off the underside of the car and we're all finished. Now these two clips should just push back on. Just make sure I've tightened everything up. Now if you've removed your rivets and you've still got the ends still in there, if you're very lucky, you can get away with just putting a tech screw in there, just a small tech screw, which means if you do ever need to remove it again, it's gonna come off a lot easier. Uh, and I've managed to do this with all four, um, so I haven't needed to put any new rivets in. You can order just the, uh, the rivets as well if you wanna replace the rivets. So there we go, that's the uh, stop-start sensor replaced on the Giulietta. It is quite a pain of a job. I wouldn't really like doing it on my back on a driveway, but it is possible. Um, you've seen all the tools you need to do it, and you've seen how it's done. So if it helps you out, please give this video a like and a share. And um, if you do like what I do, please give me a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.